TV23 recently had the pleasure of sitting down with Faye DeMassimo and Jim Croy to find out more about the Alternatives Analysis Study. Here's Robert with more. Thanks, Tiffany. You know, a lot of people have had interest in this Alternatives Analysis Study, which recently announced here in Cobb County. On set with us now is Cobb DOT Director Faye DeMassimo and Jim Croy of Croy Engineering. Thank you both for being with us. Now, I immediately threw something out there, an AA. Now, what exactly is an AA study? Alternatives analysis is a study that allows us to look at a corridor and look at all the different alignments within that corridor, the different mode opportunities. In other words, what's the best way for us to meet the transportation needs in that corridor, both in terms of the corridor, the alignment that we follow, and what kind of technology should we use to meet what the problem is with the best solution. Now, the uh, Board of Commissioners just a few weeks ago had a chance to get some details on this and see it rolled out, and this is what we're going to do for our viewers. Now, tell me, what was the result? What was the outcome of the, of the study? The outcome of the study was a bus rapid transit project along the 41 corridor that would travel from the Kennesaw State area um, across and down 41, down to the Cumberland area, and then from Cumberland down to the Art Center Station. In addition to that, there's a companion project that would be express bus that would be in the I-75 corridor and would use the new managed lane project um, that's about to be under construction here soon. Um, and we'll take those managed lanes um, all the way down and then the HOV lane system all the way down again into the Art Center Station. Now, Jim, your firm, I think, led a team of, uh, of professionals that took a look at this. Uh, what, what led to this outcome and how does that work in Cobb County you know, into the future? Well, you know, the, the team was made up of professionals in, in a lot of different disciplines, uh, not only the civil engineers, which, which you know, um, my firm is, but we had uh, people involved in the environmental side, uh, the, the modeling of, uh, which is future projections of ridership and use, uh, the civil side as far as costing, uh, land use experts, uh, uh, economic and and uh, experts, all that went into uh, uh, how, as well as some surveying folks that did some some uh, some surveys of public opinions uh, during the process. So all those uh, different disciplines come in uh, to look at how we can meet certain objectives. And as, as the director said, some of the objectives we thought we met was uh, providing quick peak hour service. In other words, that service for people who want to travel primarily from point A to point B during the work hours of the morning work trip in the, in the morning and the evening work trip in the PM. And we met that objective with the uh, express service on uh, I-75. Uh, as the other companion project on, on US-41 meets other objectives, it gets the trip-to-trip -trip service between the activity centers, uh, it meets the reverse commute. Uh, there is a, a sizable ridership that comes uh, from Atlanta uh, into Cobb County every day, uh, primarily to work uh, as a work trip. Uh, it meets that demand, which Express necessarily doesn't meet because Express is a one-way service, primarily right. south in the morning, north in the evening. So the reverse commutes can met. Uh, and then that, that connectivity up and down the corridor. We have some major activity centers. If you, you know, you got just the universities along the line is Kennesaw State University, uh, Southern Polytech, Life College, and then you get on in and, and connect into Georgia State, Georgia Tech, uh, Savannah College of Art and Design. All those are within this, this study corridor. Uh, so uh, a big opportunity to come together and look at how we can serve those objectives of uh, providing ridership in a way that people will actually use because the best service is one that people actually will use. Absolutely. Now, think BRT, Bus Rapid Transit, what does that look like? I've never seen the vehicle. How does that work? How does it interface with the passengers? Where do they get on? Sure. A bus rapid transit vehicle is still a bus. It's still a rubber tired um, vehicle, but it's much larger, so it has a larger capacity, and oftentimes it's an articulated vehicle. That is, it looks like it's got a, a center section that actually enables it to make turns and so forth um, in, so a, in a very in the middle flexible for us way. George grads. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Um, and then the other thing that's very unique about it is very similar to a train. You know, when you get on a bus now, one of our um, Cobb Community Transit buses, you step up into the bus. With um, the BRT buses, often the platforms um, are level with the bus um, entryway okay. so that you are stepping right onto it just like you would step onto a train or the monorail, a monorail type system like you would see at Disney. 
Right. Because, you know, I see buses occasionally now that when they stop, the bus will actually lower itself down. And I, and I assume that makes it one easier for the general passenger, but also for maybe those with disabilities Absolutely. as well. Now, what are the advantages of having, uh, are you going to have like stations up and down Cobb Parkway? Is that how that would work? We are. In the um, Cobb Parkway corridor, there's about 20 stations planned. And again, as Jim mentioned earlier, these are all planned around the activity centers, mm -hmm. uh, places where people are trying to go to and from um, along that corridor. So some of the stations will be very simple stations, almost platforms and, and not much more. Other stations, however, will be more uh, sort of fit in with a neighborhood, fit in with a retail area, for example, or even a station that could be pretty um, uh, grand uh, that would be serve that area around the Cobb Galleria, the Performing Arts mm -hmm. Center, and so forth. Um, so you have lots of different station types that will be intended to fit in with the community around them um, all up and down that corridor. And again, keep in mind, as Jim mentioned earlier, that's to provide a lot of connectivity, so more stops, more stations. On the 75 corridor, we're only looking at potentially about three stations, and that would really be to serve at the areas where we have park and ride lots and we have areas where we're gathering in those commuters, giving them that quick trip from home to work. Jim, you know, it seems like, especially during this process and other studies that I've seen, the most frequent criticism is, are you going to be able to fill it up? Will there be enough riders on it or is it going to ride empty? And, of course, uh, folks who do studies are quick to come back with, here's our estimated ridership. Where do you guys get those numbers from? Well, you know, I mentioned earlier, one of the expertise that, that was brought into the system uh, was folks that will do what we call modeling. Mm -hmm. and, and basically modeling is taking a set of criteria numbers and projecting what it would be into the future. Uh, and then you... Uh, you can take those models over time and look at your results and, and, and see how accurate your predictions are over time. Uh, and, and they've been able to do that with, with these. So, so you take general data for the region. Uh, you know where people live. You know where people work. You know the, uh, some of the economic uh, development trends within certain areas that will be job producers or residential producers. So all that data goes into the consideration of the model. Uh, and then these, these folks make um, uh, projections based on what we know today and what some of the trends have been, what would be in the future. And, and when we talk about numbers in the alternative analysis, it was all the year 2040 numbers. So the model is projecting uh, numbers out uh, to the 2040. Uh, so, you know, it, it's done with, with ability to objectively look at trends, make predictions, and use models that have been calibrated based on previous experience. So they know the, the projection techniques uh, give reasonable uh, expectation of accuracy. The approaches that we use to do that as well all meet the national standards, the federal standards required for doing that. One of the things that was interesting about that is that we were able to take what's the projected ridership for this particular project and compare it to other projects that are already in operation in other parts of the country um, that are similar to ours. We were also able to compare it to the, um, the traffic volumes. Um, which is a very comparable metric, sure. um, average daily traffic, ADT, be able to compare that to the ridership. And what we found, particularly for Cobb County citizens, is that if you've ridden the roadway that's the Windy Hill Extension, um, this project um, would enable us to carry more people than that, more trips than that is able to carry. Um, for example, it will be very comparable, somewhat less than, but very comparable to the kind of impact that we expect to be able to see with the managed lane project on 75 Carter when it's implemented. And it's very similar to other su very successful uh, transit projects similar to it around the country, both in Charlotte and in Phoenix, in terms of its ability to attract and provide service to riders. Jim, when I imagine how this is going to look, and I, you know, I come down 41 to go to work, am I going to be in my car in a couple of years jockeying for a position with a big old BRT articulating in the middle, uh, <laughs> or does it have its own special lane? Well, well one, of the, one of the key points that we found out when we started looking at uh, some of the projections and some of the other areas where uh, either bus rapid transit or light rail transit or even heavy rail transit, one of the key elements that was the portion what we call a fixed guideway. Uh, that means that these vehicles will be running in a dedicated lane. Okay. 
a fixed guideway. In this case with BRT, it'd be a bus lane or they would be sharing a lane in the HOV, but it still would be separated or the managed lanes, but it would still be separated from the general purpose traffic that's going up and down 41. So if you were on US 41 at the time, you would uh, more, more likely these would be bus lanes in the median of US 41. That way they don't, uh, uh, there's no issues interacting with driveways and things right. like that. And they would be particular areas where uh, you could cross like you would any other uh, median divided highway. So uh, hopefully uh, the buses, the folks who would be using uh, the BRT would be moving along at, at a speed certainly competitive or hopefully quicker uh, than at least in the peak hour of the peak hour traffic. Right. One of the key things we, we also looked at in 41, uh, looked at a couple of different opportunities of how we deal challenges of how we deal with, with the busy intersections. Uh, some of the intersections, well, we will grade separate. In other words, the bus fixed guideway, the bus lane, we either uh, fly over or tunnel under particular intersections. Uh, so there's no disruption to the vehicle traffic as well as the timing of the of the BRT traffic. Uh, others will we we will uh, what we call signal preemption. In other words, as the BRT vehicle approaches a particular intersection, the signal would recognize that that BRT bus is coming, and the timing would change to allow the bus to to travel basically straight through. Uh, which would also benefit the traffic running in the general purpose the lanes too, because <laughs> they're running right beside it. So, right. so, uh, but, but some of the busier intersection we would grade separate. I think uh, depending on what the final alignment is, we're looking at uh, ten to twelve of the inter major intersections on US 41 to be grade separated. Uh, the others will be signal preempted, and even areas where you have median breaks. Uh, where people would need to cross at certain areas non-signalized, those would also have some type of signal system so that somebody wanting to cross, cross the, the, the bus fixed guideway would know a signal that a bus is either coming or right, not coming. Absolutely. And so all that's done in a very, you know, a very safe and uh, signalized manner. Gotcha. So, Faye, how quick are we going to see these buses on uh, 41 and 75? When do we get there? How do we get there? Well, one of the things that we're doing next steps is any time that you may be seeking federal funding at some point in the future, you have to go through an environmental assessment or an environmental documentation process. Um, we were fortunate um, that uh, we already have the funding in place for that. Um, that process has already begun, take about 18 months or so. Um, so in about a year and a half to two years when that is complete, um, the Board of Commissioners will have the opportunity to view all of this information, evaluate all this information. There'll be a very robust public outreach process that'll be occurring all during that period of time, and then make a decision about whether they'd like to proceed forward with seeking federal funds to implement the project. Now, in this environmental study, is that where they look for the red wing hogger dodger, you know, trying to I mean, these are kind of the issues they're working on as well? It is, but actually um, in this particular quarter, in either of these particular quarters, 75 or 41, you don't see too many of the, the bugs and bunnies type of stuff. What you do see are things about air, noise, um, other kind of human impacts and so forth, um, you know, biz impacts to businesses and those kinds of things. So we want to be looking all along that corridor and see what are all of the, the different human and natural um, impacts that may occur and figure out how are we going to address those things. One of the things that we were able to address early on is, of course, in any of these projects, any of the alignments that we looked at involved a crossing of the Chattahoochee. Mm -hmm. There's probably not a more sensitive resource right. um, anywhere in the region. And we um, have had great meetings with both the Riverkeeper and the National Park Service. Um, and by looking at using the existing um, bridge, the existing 75 bridge, we believe that, um, again, we've come up with a way to be able to, again, focus on using that existing infrastructure so we're being as both as cost effective but also very prudent with all of the resources that the taxpayer dollars have already gone to put out there. How can we get every bit of um, capacity out of those in order to give people a better travel experience? Excellent. And if somebody wants to keep up with your progress, I assume it's the Cobb DOT website. Anything else? Absolutely. That's all. Okay, good. Well, thank you all for being with us. I hope to have you back. Maybe when we get closer to getting this environmental wrapped up, we update our viewers and let them know what's happening as well. Very good. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Robert. Back to you, Tiffany.